Juggernaut. Hello and welcome to my top 20 Amiga vs fighting games. The rules for this list are dead easy to follow. One, it must be a versus fighting game. You could be against one opponent, you could be against two opponents or possibly more, but as long as it's not a side-scrolling beat-em-up, it will count. No final fight in this list, guys. Second, and most importantly of all, games must still be fun to play today. Without further ado, Let's get on to my number 20 of my top 20 Amiga fighting games of all time. Number 20, Amiga Karate. Very simple and straightforward fighting game. You have to defeat the enemy or enemies in later levels, as well as obstacles around the screen using a selection of, I think it was 16 different moves. Fairly simplistic, the graphics are nothing to shout home about, but, but this was quite impressive back in the day and it's still enjoyable for the odd gameplay session. That's why it fits in my top 20 at the 20 spot. Number 19, The Karate Kid Part 2. And for those of you who own the NES version, you must be thinking, what the hell? Karate Kid, really? And for those of you who own an Amiga, you might think, Karate Kid, really? But in actual fact, it's got a unique art style with very smooth animation. The gameplay, while very simplistic and has a limited moveset, it is fun. The single player has a good difficulty curve, and multiplayer, you can have some really good bouts on this. I personally find Karate Kid 2 a lot of fun, and that's why it's on my list. Number 18, WWF WrestleMania, and speaking of a lot of fun, this is the closest we ever got to a home console conversion of WWF WrestleFest. This had the same look and the same feel as the arcade game, although on a much smaller scale. I really enjoyed this back in the day. The magazines might have absolutely trounced it, but I had a lot of fun with my friends playing this, and even recording footage for this, I, I had a really good time. Number 17, don't laugh, it's Pit Fighter. Now, you forget about the SNES version, forget about the Game Boy version, forget about the Master System version. This is one of the finest versions of Pit Fighter there is outside of the arcade. The only one that beats it is the Mega Drive version. This, on the Amiga, is a really good fun game. It may be a bit dated by today's standards, but you gotta remember, Pit Fighter's tech was considered state of the art when it was first released, and the Amiga conversion was considered virtual actually arcade perfect. Number 16, Full Contact. These are the guys who made Worms and they created Full Contact. This was a, a low price release when it was first came out and it's very reminiscent of Yi Ar Kung Fu uh, in the way it handles the way the fighting mechanics work. You've got different enemies that have different styles and different weapons that you have to fight through. It's extremely difficult and my skills have aged very badly. I couldn't get past the second guy but I had a hell of a lot of fun playing it and I remember spending many hours as a kid playing through that game. Number 15, Panzer Kickboxing, also known as Best of the Best Championship Karate. Now, if you like a bit of strategy in your fighting game, this is the game for you. Not only do you build your fighter from scratch, you even design his move set from a selection of presets, and then you take the moves that you've designed and you wail on someone's face with them using your fists and your feet. It's a very smooth, very interesting fighting game, and with an element of strategy you don't see in any other fighting game on the Amiga. Number 14, Capital Punishment, a game mired in controversy due to some of its very sexually suggestive characters, uh, but it was also a technically astounding masterpiece. This is probably technically the most impressive fighting game on the Amiga entirely. The graphics are very smart, they've got some very good tricks to do with lighting hidden in the game. The game itself uh, is a little simplistic, but it's a lot of fun. The computer is outrageously difficult to beat. Uh, 
Um, but the biggest draw is the blood and the instant death in each level. Number 12, Primal Rage. I was never a fan of the arcade game of Primal Rage, and I didn't really enjoy it when it came out on consoles either, but because of the limited library of fighting games on the Amiga, Primal Rage actually deserves to be taken notice of. It's it's really well designed for the one button control scheme. It does have an option for two buttons there too, and a CD32 pad. It looks the part, it sounds the part, it plays the part, and it is quite a fun, if simplistic, fighter. Number 11, Master X, the genesis of Master X. This is a game I'd never heard of before until I started doing this video and I started playing all the fighting games on the Amiga and wow, what a surprise, this is a gem. I would have loved to have played this one when I had my Amiga as my main system of choice back in the day. It looks great, it plays great, there is a limited selection of moves but they are done with care and consideration of the Amiga's one button control scheme. It plays very well, it's very responsive and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's kind of based on the true story, which is really weird and unique. Number 11, Body Blows Galactic, the sequel to Body Blows. It's a very, very good fun game. It's got beautiful graphics, and it really set the standard for what an Amiga fighting game could be if designed for the ground up for the system. The only downside with Body Blows Galactic, and the reason why it's not higher than the original, is because it has a couple of glaring glitches, making some of the special moves extremely difficult to pull off and rendering you helpless for small periods of time. Number 10, Elf Mania, and it's a rather unique fighting game because it's only partly a fighting game. You start off on a grid, and the idea is, much like tic-tac-toe, you have to make a complete line across the grid, either diagonally, vertically, or horizontally. Um, you win your squares by fighting. Whoever wins the fight wins the square, and they get to pick the next square, and so on and so forth, until the board has a full line across it. Really interesting concept, lots of fun, beautiful graphics, great sound. It, it's, it's an awful lot of fun, especially in two-player mode. Trust me. Number nine, Barbarian, also known as Death Sword in the US. It's a very simple, straightforward game that was released on the 8-bit systems first and then upported to the Amiga and the ST. Uh, it's it's just pure gameplay. The, the it's it's just Barbarian has a wonderful weight to its controls, a wonderful weight to its sword play, and it's got violence and gore that was shocking back in the day. That's the world's first fatality you saw right there, folks. And a goblin boots his head off the screen. I mean, what is there not to like about Barbarian? It is superb fun, and it's one for the ages. Number 8, Brutal Cause of Fury, an animal based fighting game where you learn your special moves the further in the game you go. So it's just quite interesting in that regard. You start off with a basic set of moves, and as you go along, you learn taunts, you learn specials, you learn ultra heavy, high power moves. But no matter where you are in the game, even without the special moves, you have a wide range of attacks that you can perform against a wide range of different characters with different skill sets. It's a really enjoyable game that often gets overlooked. The graphics are superb for an Amiga. Even this, the Amiga 500 version, is beautifully bright and colourful with ultra smooth animation. And on the Amiga 1200 it's enhanced even further. I don't know why Brutal Pause of Fury never got the credit it deserved on any system, because for me, across the board, it was a really enjoyable fighter. I'm just so glad that the Amiga version was done with love and care. Number 7, Body Blows, and this was probably the game on the Amiga that showed that one-on-one -on -one fighting could really be done with style that could rival the consoles. 
body blows at the time fresh off the abominable port that was Street Fighter 2 was a breath of fresh air. It looked the business. This is back in 1993 on a Commodore Amiga 500 and it looked like a console game which was, well, quite simply very difficult to achieve back then. Body Blows was one of the key games that put Team 17 on the map and made the Amiga relevant in the fighting game space. Number 6, Mortal Kombat and holy crap, when the arcade game first got released we would have had no inkling that it could ever be possible on the Amiga, let alone with such a fantastic rendition such as this. It's better than the Super Nintendo version, it's better than the 8-bit versions and it's even marginally better than what is considered the best version of all time which was the Sega Mega Drive version. The Amiga port of Mortal Kombat really considered the 2-button or single-button layout carefully and it designed this beautiful incredible conversion of a solid arcade game. Number five, International Karate Plus. Ah, oh, man, this game. I spent a very long time ooing and ahhing about what position to place this in. At one point, it was going to be my number one top Amiga fighting game because it's so beautifully designed. It's so entertaining. It has so many Easter eggs, so many things to do. So much is packed into this one game. It has such fond memories for me, and I still play it regularly to this day. In the end, I put it at my number five spot because I believe the other games are more technically advanced, even though this is equally as fun as they are. I love International Karate Plus, and I will be an advocate for this game until the day I die. I absolutely adore it. And if you play it, you will too. There's just so many options. You can adjust the speed, you've got the bonus rounds, you've got some balls and bombs. You can play two player, you can play one player, or you can play against a computer. It's it's way ahead of its time and I will love it to be. Number four, Super Street Fighter 2. Just when we did not hope of a decent Street Fighter game on the Amiga, here comes Super Street Fighter 2. It doesn't look very nice compared to the console versions. It doesn't sound that great compared to the console versions, but it has it where it counts, and that is in control and in gameplay. Super Street Fighter 2 is far superior to the original Street Fighter 2 game. This was actually done with care and it plays really well. It may not look graphically as nice as Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, but the frame rate on that was like a drowning dog. It was slow, sluggish, and it was generally unpleasant to look at. Um, this is smooth, it's fast, it may not be pretty, but it gets the job done and it feels like a Street Fighter should feel. And for that, it's in my top four. Street Fighter is one of my favorite games ever. It's one of the greatest fighting games ever made. And hey, it may have taken a while, but the Amiga finally got a port of the game that's worth playing. In fact, there's only one other port that beats it. And you'll see that coming up soon. Nah, in what? fact, right now, Mortal Kombat 2 is my number three. And just when you thought Mortal Kombat was a bang on port, that was insane and almost impossible to release on an Amiga. Here comes Mortal Kombat 2! On an A500 with a Mega RAM, they managed to fit the entire Mortal Kombat 2 game on an Amiga 500. That deserves a standing ovation with a rapturous applause because holy shit did they do a phenomenal job on this game. It looks good, 
it plays brilliantly it really takes care and consideration into its control system it gives you one button control methods and two button control methods it plays wonderfully it looks the part every single character is in there and plays exactly as you would expect them to phenomenal absolutely phenomenal translation of a brilliant, fantastic fighting game. Mortal Kombat 2 has always been an incredible fighting game, and on the Amiga, it's one of the very best. Number two, Shadow Fighter. This is a game that not many people outside of Amiga circles know about, and it's a great shame. I think this would have done really well if it was ported over the console, but it was designed from the ground up for the Commodore Amiga, and it really shows. The control is brilliantly realized. Single button control method as default really, really works well. The control is fluid, it's responsive, the special moves are easy to pull off but hard to actually master. There is a wide range of special moves, there's a wide range of levels and characters. Everything looks and sounds really, really cool with a cartoony aesthetic. I just think Shadow Fighter is fantastic. It's got a really in-depth combo system. It's really difficult in single player and multiplayer you can play for hours on end. Shadow Fighter is a truly worthy late addition to the Amiga software library. But here we are, my number one Amiga fighting game of all time. Yeah, you heard the man. Fighting Spirit, the Supreme Warriors Tournament! Yeah, uh, 1996 game, so it came out extremely late in the Amiga's life. So not many people know about this game, but man is this absolutely freaking fantastic! While most Amiga games were trying to compete with console games, the guys who made Fighting Spirit said, Nah, screw that, we are going to compete with Neo Geo games. And they succeeded. Fighting Spirit looks and feels like a Neo Geo classic. This is running on an A500 with one meg of RAM and it looks like it could have blown away any Super Nintendo fighting game on the market at that point. It's just great and the little details like blood being persistent on the floor between rounds and the fact that it works brilliantly, amazingly, fantastically, silky, smoothly with a single button control system really goes to show that they took time and effort making sure that gameplay could be as smooth as possible for the system they loved, which is the Amiga. And that's the only system Fighting Spirit ever came out for. It came out for the Amiga and it came out for the Amiga CD32. That is it. No other system got graced by Fighting Spirit's presence and that's one of the many reasons why it's my number one Amiga fighting game of all time. And if you like my top 20 Amiga fighting games list, please consider subscribing to my channel. There are more top lists for you to check out. And please consider supporting me on Patreon. That really helped me out making future videos. You can check me out at Facebook or at Twitter or leave a comment below. Until next time, bye for now.